Well, howdy there, friends. Today, we're embarking on a remarkable journey to catch a glimpse of how the cast members from The Jeffersons have changed over the years. We'll be revealing their true identities and ages, and you're in for a real treat as we compare their youthful days on the show to the present year of 2023. So, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Y'all ready for this ride? Let's get this journey rolling. Number 1. Isabel Sanford as Louise Jefferson. In the chaotic world of comedy and drama, Louise is the anchor, the voice of reason, and the embodiment of collectedness. When life decides to play with fire, she's the firefighter of family gatherings, swooping in to extinguish conflicts and ensure that every occasion is a joyous celebration. Isabel Sanford's portrayal of Louise is nothing short of sensational. She takes a character and transforms her into a force of nature, a woman who can face any storm with a smile and emerge unscathed. Louise comes up as an inspiration, a reminder that even in the wildest tempests of life, we can find our center and keep on shining. Roxy Roker was already a seasoned actor with a rich background in theater before she secured the role of Wheezy Jefferson. With over 30 years of experience as a distinguished Broadway actress, she transitioned to Hollywood and swiftly made her mark. Upon arriving in Tinseltown, Roxy Roker landed roles in a variety of popular TV shows, including Bewitched, The Mod Squad, The Carol Burnett Show, The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Kojak, Hangin' with Mr. Cooper, The Parkers, and many more. Her talent also shone on the big screen, where she portrayed Tilly, the housekeeper, in the iconic classic film Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, 1967, sharing the screen with luminaries like Sidney Poitier, Spencer Tracy, and Katherine Hepburn. Perhaps one of her most notable achievements came with her role on The Jeffersons, for which she clinched an Emmy Award in 1981. In doing so, she became only the second black actress to ever win a Primetime Emmy Award and the very first to secure the title of Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. Roxy Roker's illustrious career even extended to the world of animation, with her final performance being a voiceover of an animated version of herself on The Simpsons episode titled Millhouse Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Louise Jefferson played by Isabel Sanford when she was 58 years old. Isabel was hospitalized at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center on July 4, 2004, where she died of natural causes, five days later a month before her 87th birthday. Number 2. Sherman Hemsley as George Jefferson George Jefferson is like the fiery counterpart to Archie Bunker, an explosion of opinions and schemes that keeps you on your toes. While Archie might need a moment to mull things over, George is more like a lightning bolt, striking with sharp comebacks and rapid-fire thinking. George Jefferson has accomplished quite a bit in life. He boasts a loving family, a thriving business, and a successful son to take pride in. One might assume he'd be content, but that assumption would be dead wrong. Satisfaction is an alien concept to this ambitious New Yorker. Enter the charismatic and no-holds-barred star, George Jefferson, whose rise to fame began with his memorable clashes with Archie Bunker. Watching this character in action was always a riot, but one standout moment was his boxing contest. One more punch, and you're ready, George. Despite his gruff exterior, George was a hard-working individual who meant no harm. The actor behind George Jefferson, Sherman Hemsley, knew the value of hard work from a young age. He made the unconventional decision to drop out of high school and enlist in the Air Force. During the day, he worked diligently for the post office while his evenings were dedicated to acting in plays. This commitment eventually led him to Broadway, where the legendary Norman Lear took notice and cast him as George Jefferson. In 1989, Hemsley, who had a background as a jazz keyboardist, ventured into music with the release of a single titled Ain't That a Kick in the Head. His acting career continued to thrive, with occasional reprisals of his beloved role as George Jefferson. His final appearance as the character was in 2011, in an episode of House of Pain. 
Beyond his acting pursuits, Sherman Hemsley was known as a private and reclusive individual who never married or had children. His outstanding contributions to television were acknowledged when he was inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame in 2012. George Jefferson played by Sherman Hemsley when he was 37 years old. Sadly, on July 24, 2012, Hemsley died at his home in El Paso, Texas, at age 74. Number 3. Roxy Roker as Helen Willis George may think he can get under her skin with his racially charged nicknames, but Helen? Well, she's the reigning queen of zingers, and she knows just how to silence those insults with her razor-sharp retorts. It's like a comedic showdown every time these two spar verbally. George might fire off his best shots, but Helen? She's always locked and loaded with a comeback that leaves everyone in stitches. And when it's time to give George a taste of his own medicine, Helen does it with a playful twist. She affectionately dubs him Shorty, turning the tables on him and showing that she can play the banter game just as well, if not better. Helen Willis, Louise's closest friend, often finds herself embroiled in witty banter with George that rivals even the most bitter of rivalries. Their exchanges, particularly regarding Helen's interracial marriage, could make one believe that George is her arch nemesis. During the casting process, producers inquired if she would be comfortable with her character having a white husband. Her response was to proudly show them a photograph of her own husband, a white Jewish man, bearing a striking resemblance to Tom Willis, her character's spouse. Roxy Roker and her husband, Mr. Kravitz, are the proud parents of musician and actor Lenny Kravitz, who frequently visited the set. The legacy of Roxy's star power continues to this day, as her granddaughter is none other than the beloved Hollywood actress Zoe Kravitz. Following her role on The Jeffersons, Roxy Roker appeared in various minor parts, with her last TV appearance in an episode of Hangin' with Mr. Cooper in 1993. She shared a lifelong friendship with Marla Gibbs, Helen Willis played by Roxy Roker when she was 46 years old. Unfortunately, Roker died in Los Angeles, California on December 2, 1995 of breast cancer. She was 66. Number 4. Franklin Cover as Tom Willis Tom is the kind of person who would go to the ends of the earth for his loved ones. He's like a guardian angel, always watching out for the well-being of those he cares about even when he's under the gentle, or not-so-gentle, guidance of his strong-willed wife, he remains a beacon of warmth and love. Tom's relationship with his wife is a testament to the beauty of togetherness. Sure, he might occasionally find himself caught up in some of George's wild and zany schemes, but that's all part of the fun, right? After all, what's life without a little adventure? Most of the time, Tom is quite content to keep a safe and comfortable distance from the whirlwind of chaos that seems to follow his friend George. He's the calming presence in the midst of the storm, the one who reminds us all that sometimes it's the simple joys of life, like a quiet evening at home or a heartwarming chat with a friend, that truly matter. Tom Willis, Helen's husband, often found himself at the receiving end of most of George's jests. However, their friendship was genuine, and their playful banter was an integral part of their dynamic. One memorable episode saw Tom, Helen, and George getting trapped in George's bathroom, creating comedic chaos. Franklin Cover embarked on his acting career in 1960 and made a few appearances on The Jackie Gleason Show in 1967, playing the role of a police officer. However, his big break arrived with his portrayal of Tom Willis on The Jeffersons, where he became the perfect foil for George Jefferson's character. In the 80s and 90s, he continued to grace various TV shows with his presence. Notably, he appeared in two episodes of Who's the Boss in 1991 as Mr. Kimball. His final acting role was in the Chris Farley comedy Almost Heroes in 1998, a fitting end to a remarkable career. Tom Willis played by Franklin Cover when he was 47 years old. 
Sadly, Cover died of pneumonia at the Lillian Booth Actors Home in Inglewood, New Jersey, on February 5, 2006. Number 5. Marla Gibbs as Florence Johnston. With a flick of her wrist and a snap of her fingers, she can effortlessly transform the Jefferson's apartment into a sparkling oasis. It's like she's got a secret magic wand hidden right there in her apron. While others might groan at the thought of tackling household chores, Florence takes them head on, and she does it with style. She's got an uncanny ability to make dirt and dust disappear faster than you can say, cleaning fairy. The Jefferson's place doesn't just get cleaned, it gets a Florence-style makeover, and it's a sight to behold. Marla Gibbs boasts a prolific and enduring career in Hollywood, stretching back to the early 1970s when she graced the screen in blaxploitation films. However, her breakout moment came in 1975 when she landed the role of Florence Johnson in The Jeffersons. Remarkably, her acting journey continued to flourish long after the show concluded over 30 years ago. Following her tenure on The Jeffersons, Gibbs embarked on another successful venture as the leading actress in the NBC sitcom 227. This series, which also featured Jackie Harry, Hal Williams, a teenage Regina King, and Helen Martin, saw her portray the character of Mary Jenkins from 1985 to 1990. Gibbs transitioned into supporting roles in various popular TV shows, reuniting with Sherman Hemsley as Florence and George on both The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Tyler Perry's House of Pain. Her impressive career also included a stint on American Horror Story, Hotel, and many other notable roles. In her personal life, Marla Gibbs is divorced and is a mother of three children. She is the younger sister of actress Susie Garrett, known for her role as Betty Johnson on the 80s TV sitcom Punky Brewster. Born in 1931, Marla Gibbs is alive and well, continuing her acting journey. In the late 2010s, she made her debut appearance in an episode of Blackish and remained actively engaged in various projects, including Spider Man reinforcements. Florence Johnston, played by Marla Gibbs, when she was 44 years old, and now she is 92 years old. Number 6. Paul Benedict as Harry Bentley. With his charming British accent and unique sense of style, Harry Bentley brings a touch of class to the neighborhood. He may seem a bit odd to some, but his heart of gold and genuine kindness shine through. George Jefferson may find him weird and annoying at times, but deep down, they share a special bond. Harry Bentley, the Jefferson's eccentric next-door neighbor, held a rather unique profession as a UN interpreter, known for his flamboyant persona. Despite his quirks, Harry remained a kind-hearted individual. However, George Jefferson often found him to be an annoying playboy Englishman. Nevertheless, their occasional disagreements did not hinder the possibility of forging an unexpected friendship. Paul Benedict, the actor who portrayed Harry Bentley, possessed distinctive physical features, including an overseased jowl and a prominent nosy. These traits were partially attributed to acromegaly, a medical condition shared with Ted Cassidy from the Adams family. While Paul Benedict is celebrated for his diverse body of work, he is perhaps most renowned for his role as the Mad Painter on Sesame Street. In one of his later projects, the mockumentary Waiting for Guffman, Benedict portrayed Roy, a character whose mistaken identity adds comedic complexity to the film. This mockumentary was created by the team behind Spinal Tap and is considered a hilarious addition to the genre. Benedict's final acting role came in the 2008 film Side by Each, capping off his accomplished career. Harry Bentley played by Paul Benedict when he was 37 years old. Sadly, on December 1, 2008, Benedict was found dead of a brain hemorrhage at his home in Aquina, Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. He was 70 years old. Number 7. Berlinda Tolbert as Jenny Willis Jenny's love for Lionel Jefferson knows no bounds. It's a love that transcends race. 
defying the narrow-mindedness of others, because love doesn't discriminate, and neither does Jenny. Now, George Jefferson might have his opinions and disapprovals, even going so far as to label Jenny a zebra. But Jenny? She wears her stripes with pride, not as a symbol of division, but as a badge of honor, representing her unique heritage. Jenny's love story with Lionel reminds us all that love is a force that knows no boundaries, no prejudices. It's a force that unites hearts and souls, no matter the differences that might exist in the world around us. Tolbert also enjoyed some success in the world of film, notably appearing in the Eddie Murphy-led Harlem Nights in 1989 and later taking on the role of Stack's girlfriend in Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas in the following year. At the age of 73, she has retired from acting since 2013, with her last significant role being in a 2005 episode of the acclaimed HBO series Six Feet Under. Berlinda Tolbert has been happily married to journalist Bob Reed since 1979. Jenny Willis played by Berlinda Tolbert when she was 26 years old, and now she is 74 years old. Number 8. Zara Cully as Louise Jefferson. In this battle of words, Louise proves that sometimes the best defense is a good offense. Her ability to parry Mother Jefferson's jabs with humor and intelligence is nothing short of legendary. So, here's to Louise, the queen of witty retorts, and her unwavering ability to stand her ground in the face of criticism. She's a reminder that sometimes a well-placed comeback is the best way to silence the naysayers. Cheers to Louise Jefferson, the reigning champion of snark and sass. Zara Cully made a significant impact during her time on The Jeffersons, despite being part of the show for only its first three seasons. She portrayed the memorable character of Mother Jefferson. Cully's career began in the 1940s when she was involved in producing, writing, and directing plays in New York City. Later, she joined Edward Waters College, an HBCU, historically black colleges and universities, in Jacksonville, Florida. There, she earned the reputation of the Dean of Drama and gained respect for her impeccable elocution. By the time she was offered the role on The Jeffersons, Cully had amassed an impressive list of acting credits spanning half a century. Louise Jefferson played by Zara Cully when she was 83 years old. Unfortunately, Cully died at the Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles on February 28, 1978, from lung cancer, aged 86. Number 9. Ned Wertimer as Ralph Hart when it comes to cash, from big bills to the tiniest loose change, Ralph knows how to make those pockets jingle like a symphony. At first glance, he might seem like your typical hardworking fellow with a decent attitude, always ready with a smile and a nod. But here's the thing about Ralph. Every interaction with him is a golden opportunity to cash in. He's got a knack for ensuring that his hand is constantly stuffed with those generous tips. Ralph Hart, the maestro of making money, has turned every door he opens into a chance to hear the sweet sound of coins and bills dropping into his waiting hand. Ralph Hart played by Ned Wertimer when he was 52 years old. Sadly, Wertimer died on January 2, 2013, at the Sherman Village Healthcare Center in Los Angeles, at the age of 89. Number 10. Damon Evans as Lionel Jefferson. While others might be quick to anger or irritation, Lionel has a remarkable gift. He can see right through the ignorance and find the humor in Archie's well-meaning yet slightly misguided comments. Archie, known for his often blunt and occasionally, well, let's say colorful language. He's a character, that's for sure. Now, most folks might bristle at some of the things that come out of Archie's mouth, but not Lionel. Lionel Jefferson, the outspoken and witty son of the Jefferson family, eventually forms a close bond with Archie Bunker's son-in-law, Meathead. Interestingly, Lionel remains unfazed by Archie's antics and even finds him amusing, as he himself is quite quick-witted. The character of Lionel was originally portrayed by Mike Evans. Fortunately for Mike, Norman Lear's initial choice, Cleavon Little from Blazing Saddles, didn't get the role. 
Mike, however, decided to leave the show after the first season due to a desire for more screen time. This change didn't pose a problem, as Damon Evans stepped into the role admirably. Mike Evans was a multifaceted individual, as he was not only an actor, but also one of the creators and writers behind another highly successful Norman Lear production, Good Times. In later years, he ventured into real estate investment and owned properties in California's Inland Empire, Lionel Jefferson played by Damon Evans when he was 26 years old, and now he is 73 years old. Number 11. J. Hammer as Alan Willis. Alan's extroverted personality radiates like a source of joy, and his quick and sharp sense of humor ensures a constant stream of laughter. He's the kind of friend you'd dream of having, perpetually armed with a witty retort and a playful spark in his gaze. Alan Willis played by J. Hammer when he was 34 years old, and now he is 78 years old. Number 12. Danny Wells as Charlie. When you're in a tight spot and you're not sure which way to turn, who's the first person you'd want by your side? It's Charlie, of course. His kind-hearted nature is like a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. But it's not just his willingness to help that makes Charlie so special. Nope, he's also got a sense of humor that can light up a room. When he's around, you can bet there'll be laughter in the air. Charlie played by Danny Wells when he was 34 years old. Sadly, Wells died in Toronto on November 28, 2013, of cancer at the age of 72. We really love the cast of the The Jeffersons. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please like, comment, and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on the next video.